this uh, tutorial is on how to calculate or measure forecast accuracy and we're going to be looking at three measures the main absolute deviation MAD the main squared deviation or mean squared error MSE and mean absolute percentage error MAPE so uh, let's start with MAD I've got a forecast here on the screen I'm not going to tell you how I achieved the forecast but I do have my actual values we can label this a and my forecast values which I will label uh, F now in order to calculate MAD MAD is the average of the absolute errors MAD mean absolute deviation so it is the average of the absolute errors first step is to calculate the er errors absolute errors so again I'm going to label this absolute uh, errors or I could have just used the pipe operators you know what uh, let's do that let's make it cleaner with less piping absolute represented by the uh, pipes Excel has an absolute function just simplifies what you want to do so we're going to say equals absolute that's the function of the difference between the actual minus forecast the errors is calculated as actual value minus forecast value so the absolute of that is what we want for the first one it's correct so now I'm going to double click and copy the formula all the way down and get rid of some of the zeros to reduce the clutter on the, on the uh, screen so there we have it all of the errors in the forecast now that I have the uh, all the errors the MAD is just the average of all of those right so let's calculate MAD it is equal to and that's the average of all of the absolute errors so we can say that on average the errors in our forecast is 64 per month sometimes it's over sometimes it's under it doesn't matter because MAD weights all errors equally so on average our error is 64 per now to calculate MSE that's the second thing mean absolute mean square error I need how about I format this I, I have a formatting that I like so I'm going to click on the paintbrush and paint it on the other one so that it has the same format um, so to calculate the mean squared error we need the square of the errors so I could just use the square of this of course so we will say it is error squared let's do two and I'm going to format it by going to the formatting section clicking on the down arrow and making it a superscript so I need error squared so for my purpose I'm just going to calculate the errors again I could have used the one I've already calculated but you know what what if I didn't calculate MED what would I do so let's calculate the errors again and use the I think it's called a carrot to represent the square so that is squared that's the formula for squared press enter and it's got too many zeros I'm gonna get rid of some of them I knew it now I've already I formatted the first one so when I copy the data all the way down it's going to come uh, copy up all the formatting so uh, let's check make sense uh, click on it move the arrow to the end double click okay so this is what is should be obvious about using the mean squared errors the large values are huge when you square them the mean squared errors treats the large deviation as more significant as the small deviation look at this one the weight in the error is only 11 so uh, let's calculate the mean squared error it's the 
average, but it's it's sort of different, right? The mean squared error has a formula that looks like sample variance. It is the squared the sum of the squared deviation divided by n minus one. If it was divided by n, we would just do average because that's average. Sum all numbers together, divide by n, that's just regular averaging. But we're not doing that, so we have to do this manually. We have to sum all of the errors and then divide by n minus one. Excel has a function for calculating n and it's called a uh, count. So n, we'll say it's equal to count all of these observations here. Then I can use that to figure out what my n minus one is. So I already I knew it's, it was 59, right? But I'm using the count function for those situations where I'm not sure how many observations are in my sample. Uh, Excel has another function called formula text, and I'm going to use it to print out the MAD and the MSE formulas. Okay, so when the formulas show up, I'm going to use it to print it out. Uh, let's say I also like the format here. I'm going to paint it down here. Mm -hmm. And this formula, this format, I'm going to print it. Awesome. So now I can do MAPE. Okay, so MSE is equal to the sum of all of the errors. divided by total number of errors, which is n minus 1. Okay, so that is what the MSE looks like. And finally, we're going to calculate MAPE. MAPE is percent error. So we're going to calculate the percent error first. And that is, we take the error again, uh, again, the error is calculated as the actual minus the forecast. So the error is 21, but we're going to divide it by the actual, so we have a percentage error. Now, Excel can format a value for you as a percentage, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to multiply by 100 by ourselves and report it in percentages. So this is 3%. I think I want to put percent error here. Makes my screen a little bit more compact. So it's 3%. Uh, error of 21 is 3% of 718. Uh, now error this works it looks good i'm going to copy it all the way down and the average of these errors gives me the average percentage error of the forecast i'm sorry i should have used absolute error because for calculating it the errors above and below if i didn't use absolute errors when i add them together they will cancel each other out. The negatives will cancel the positive and make it seem as if we don't have errors. So the under forecasting is just as important as over forecasting. So we're using absolute errors. So there we have it. These are the absolute error percentages. The largest is about 25%. The smallest is about, well, 0%. So now that we have the uh, percentage errors, we can calculate MAPE as the average of those errors, average of the percent errors. So on average, we are off by 9% every single month. Done. Now, can I just say to you that if we uh, wanted these to be displayed as percentages in Excel, we wouldn't multiply the errors by 100. So if I delete the 100 here, press enter, and then ask uh, Excel to display it as a percent. So I've selected all of my data, 
and I'm going to go and click on the numbers formatting and just select percentage. Can you see? You might prefer to do this instead of multiplying it by 100. And this I'm going to format as a percentage as well with a couple of decimal points just because. So on average, our MAP is 8.57% per uh, forecast. So that's the average error in here. Now, what do you do with this accuracy measures once you've calculated it? Well, you would do this for all of your forecasting methods. So if you have two or three methods to evaluate, you would use this here to figure out which one works better. In other words, you would use it in a comparative uh, way.